Welcome to Puck Talk CS. I'm Chaz, alongside my main man, Steve-O. I have been down for the count for uh, a number of days. Steve-O actually said it's, uh, I'm on the LTIR, almost LTIR, with the flu, man. It's all from that Penn Station friggin' uh, grime, dude. So I've been down and out, but I'm I'm well enough to be sitting here on the mic today, Steve-O. I'm glad. I got to say, you look great. And also, you sound great from <laughs> from as sick as you were. You look great and you sound great as of right now. And I'll tell you what, I I was definitely blue after watching last night's game. I, <laughs> that was like the equivalent to being sick <laughs> and being on LT. I want to go on, on LTIR if, if I got to watch this team play like this moving forward. But listen, we got a lot to talk about here on today's episode. So let's talk some puck. Well, what was that? 18, 5, and 1. Like, I, I mean, Steve, you said it. One of those games is going to happen. Nashville looked like that was going to be the game. Let's be straight up. That game had it kind of written on it. And, you know, I agree with Val Akett yesterday. He said, uh, it's fun to watch him, man. And, like, I tell you, now that I've gone to the Garden and watched the games, like, I can't – I don't watch Valley that much or uh, Gino and, like, their breakdown after the game unless I throw it on YouTube um, because they'll put it on MSG's YouTube. I don't – like – the way that dude watches a hockey game, like, I want to know what goes on in his brain. Because, like, I'm watching the same exact game, bro, and I'm not picking up anything he's 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 putting down, you know, in the post game. He does a phenomenal job. Uh, he said Columbus has happened. Dallas has happened. Now Ottawa. Like, it seems like it's like this every now and then you you, you get a stinker. I, I, I mean, listen, the record shows, but, Steve, I know, like you said, that it can't be uh, consistent. Yeah, and I think, listen, I'm not ready to sound the alarm right now. You know, mm-hmm. I still think we're okay. Um, You look at those tough losses, you know, you mentioned Columbus, you mentioned Dallas. Well, what do all those losses have in common? Well, the next game, we were able to rebound. And this mm-hmm. team, and I, you got to give Laviolette credit, he's had this team ready, and the team has looked fantastic after after games that we've come out and with really were doozies. But so I'm not I'm not worried. I know we, our next game coming up here. I think we play the Capitals. Um, they've been yep. pretty good. Oh boy, that's a big one. They've been pretty Rangers good. Rangers have not played them very well. Uh, at least last season, from what I can recall, there was that one game they went into Washington and they got smoked. Granted, last year I know, but um, overall it seems like uh, there still is that edge. I know the last game I was actually at at the garden last year with the whole Patty Kane one T, but that was different. Like that caps team folded at that point. So I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, that they're, I think right now they're in a little bit of a slide, but the capitals are in a position right now where they're a little more competitive than I think anyone, you know, anyone thought they were going to be. So it's going to be a pretty big test. It will be. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> within the next week and a half, I think we play the Leafs coming up twice. And the LA Kings, who are undefeated on the road. They just set the record, NHL yeah. record. We got Boston coming up, too. So uh, we got, not to say, a tough schedule. But, I mean, when you're one of the best teams in the league, I mean, there really shouldn't be a tough schedule coming up on your plate. Um, so we can jump into matchups uh, later on um, specifically. But kind of going back to the last few games on a recap, um, Charles, what do you think? A little sloppy here, especially take a look at that Nashville game. You say you look at it and you go, ah, oh, you know, that's one that we that we kind of got away with in a sense. Um, you look at that San Jose game. Um, you got to give San Jose credit. You know, there were definitely moments where we didn't look as great and a little sloppy there too. Um, and then last night, I mean, there's just I don't think there's that that much to talk about uh, in terms of positives. I think it's good. You look at the glass half full and say they they were able to pull the win out in Nashville and not play well, and against San Jose and not play well. But I think that's what teed up a game against Ottawa. Ottawa, they have the talent. They wanted them to play run and gun, and that's what they got in the second period. Flatbury's one, Batherson Burry's one on a two on one right after the Rangers cut the lead. Uh, Keandre Miller with the great like I thought that goal was a great like rebound playoff type goal broken plays but listen like that game like you said was bound to come from the last two games I think the really the takeaways were that like Panarin had a hat trick and went to the net on goals and they showed some resiliency to come back in Nashville but other than that I don't think there's been a lot like 
something Henrik said, which I agreed with post game last night was the team needs to lock it down. Like you have the talent, but Laviolette and that system is supposed to be something you can rely on when you're in those situations. And that's not what happened. And we've seen it a few times this season, Columbus loss, granted two goals were taken away there against Dallas. That was kind of the big stinker, I think so far this season, but I think last night was probably the worst loss of the season. Um, so yeah, overall, just like, they're going to have to show some bounce back. I know you said it uh, before, but I think they're going to have to show some bounce back because they haven't played good hockey. Uh, the power play didn't come up big on that five on three. It is one game, but like you mentioned, the schedule keeps rolling and you're going to now have like <laughs> teams are going to be playing desperate right now because they have like, this is where it's still very competitive before teams are really peel away. The Rangers and the Bruins and like maybe Vegas, Vancouver, are like the only teams that have really pulled away enough that they're like somewhat out of reach. But the rest of the league is still pretty tight. In a few weeks from now, like by the time it's all star break, really like January, you're not going to have that, right? Like you, that that's how I see it. I like that take. Um, I'm actually going to be honest. I didn't really feel that bad after the Predators game. Like, I didn't think, like, yeah, we, obviously we didn't have our best game. But I I wasn't, like, a lot of Ranger fans, and I know online, and especially, you know, on the post game, you know, they were really ripping into this team. And I actually, I didn't feel that bad. To me, I thought the Sharks game was more of a game that I was like, wow, a little bit disappointed. You know, we still were able to find a way to win, and great teams find ways to win, but especially, you know, a team against the Sharks. Um, I, I didn't like what I saw there, um, especially when we had the lead and then we had six minutes left and they're able to notch two late goals. Um, I didn't, I didn't yeah. like that. That was a little sloppy there. Yeah. I mean, also some Megan Chaika put up, she's huge in the stats universe, right? I mean, absolute dog. Um, she put up a stat yesterday that actually kind of caught a lot of traction on Twitter that I also threw up odd man rushes against per game. The New York Rangers rank 27th. They, this was before last night. They allow 4.5 odd man rushes a game. That's five a game. Four to five a game, give or take a night. So listen, just like the fact that if that's the style and that's what's working, a lot of people are like, well, it doesn't really matter because look at the record. But I think where the concern is, is like last night where, yeah, they score on two of those and now the lead's completely gone. Like, you, there's no way you come back in that game. So, I I do think that is a concerning stat. I don't think, and you know what? We could go toe-to-toe on this. We could throw out numbers, but listen, the team defense hasn't held up in front of Igor. He sure as hell has not kept the team in a game. I'll keep that a, a, a buck. I think against Nashville... He played really well in the second half, but there have been some goals where it's like, listen, I know the team needs to play more structured in front of them, but we're not seeing like 2022 Vezina level Igor. And I know you can't expect that all the time, but I, I do think that in this stretch, this could have been a moment where he really stepped up and you saw Quick's performance in like Pittsburgh. We haven't really seen that type of a game from Igor yet, which is fine. Say you want listen. Praise be. You save that for the postseason. But I do think as of right now, like even in the tough moments, like they haven't really gotten the big save out of them. They did down the stretch in Nashville, but that wasn't like the three to one shorthanded opportunity that Sissons had. If he stops that, then it's not even a you don't have to score two to come back. So I do think the sure goal, like we haven't seen one where it's like, oh man, he robbed like a sure goal. Well, I'm welcome to criticism on that too. I I agree with you. Um, listen, going back to the the stats before, um, we can't lead the league in every category. I know we lead we lead the league in a lot of stuff, so that's definitely yes. an aspect to our game we need to clean up. Um, but in terms of Igor, I do agree with you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to last year and uh, or two years ago and as an example, um, he's prone to this, especially last year. I mean, he had a rough. He had a rough stretch last year, um, and I remember like we big games. We had to turn to Halak, um, mm-hmm. and this is a part of his game where you know he's he's prone to this. Um, 
am I worried? No, I'm not. Um, again, Shesty's our guy. He's our number one. Um, mm-hmm. Jonathan Quick. I know a lot of Ranger fans might be hesitant to say, "All right, well, you know, let's try and get let's get Quick out there until Shesty kind of settles in." Um, no, I think we we continue to roll Shesty. He's obviously our number one. Yes, Quick's caught lightning in a bottle here. Looks like he's turned back the clock, but I don't know. I. I I still don't know how long that's gonna last. I mean, you look at you look at the the last game Quick was in, you know. So again, I'm not sure. And again, I think you mentioned a key point. He's not really getting help from the defense at all. Um, so I, I still have confidence in Chesty to turn it around. And again, big matchups to roll him out on. You know, Boston's coming up two against Toronto. I think we got two against the Capitals. Definitely one. Uh, again, Capitals are not to be taken light, uh, lightly. Well, offensively, they've cooked up some good things this year. Um, mm-hmm. I think we got the Panthers in Tampa coming up to finish uh, finish this out year. the year. So we got we got some tough contests with some teams that could put up some heavy points. So this is going to be a testament for Igor, and it's going to be more of a testament, in my opinion, for the defense. I think the defense is really going to have to rally here together. Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with with Fox coming back or, you know, pairings or uh, kind of switched up and whatsoever. But again, defense, this last, I'd say the, these last three games has not been on par to what we've seen uh, for the, up to this point to the year as a whole for this New York Rangers team. Yeah. And I, I, you know, you brought up combos. I love Johnny. I call him hot broad on that first line, man. I friggin' love it. I love it. You know why? Because we've talked so much about Frankie Vitrano, right? And like how they need a player like that. Like they don't, don't bring him back. You know, first of all, you don't have the cap, sadly, but they needed someone like that. Like that, that, those ingredients in a skater to put on that line to comp, like if it, it, you knew what you needed next to Zabanjad and Kreider based on the way Buchnevich played, the way Vitrano played. They got a little bit of that in Brodzinski. I love, I'd love to see some longevity there. And with that, I haven't been around the team, but um, in about a week now. But according to the reports that are coming out from everybody, Vince, Molly, <laughs> Colin Stevenson, they're all saying that Kako is like progressing. So that's not a bad sign because we know he's on LTIR. I know it's in the future, but it's going to be interesting because Johnny B looks like he's playing himself into a full-time role here. I want to know your takes, though. Yeah, uh, this is interesting. Um, again, right? doesn't it get dicey, man? Because it's like we're, then we're, when those guys fill Hedo, like we don't know what's going on with him. When do they come back? When they come back, where do they go? Because I think Johnny B's earning it. He is, but I to be honest with you, I think it sounds like you're more com- confident than I am on this. Um, yeah. You know, uh, in terms of, and I talked a little about it, a little bit more about it, um, or mentioned in our last week's episode. Uh, you know, these are all good. I feel like short term answers that, yeah, up to going into January and and February, it's not really gonna. You can't really go wrong. But I'm not sure if this is a a, a strong long term answer. Like, yeah, we're getting a little pop right now, but. Let's say in a month right now, this 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 fizzles out, and I I'm not sure what the updates on Kako are. Uh, I'm not mm-hmm. sure what the updates on Hedl are. Um, so Hedl skating, you... I think Hedl skating on his own still. So that I really do think you know it's never confirmed, but I, I'm assuming it has to do with some sort of concussion, right? Because like at this point, if you're skating on your own for like it's got to be like three weeks now maybe a month, it, it's definitely, you know, I, I think that's the only thing it can point to. And with Kako, I know he's he's labeled on LTR and everyone thought it was going to be like some sort of torn MCL or something, but like he's apparently progressing. They Like the way Laviolette, I think in one of the quotes said it was like not skating yet, but like you wouldn't even, I don't think he would touch that with the 10 foot pole if he didn't think he was going to be skating soon. That's all kind of speculation, but um, I just think it's better news than anything you, maybe we could have expected from Kako. That's, but you that's, really think – so you're saying you don't see Johnny Hot Rod as a, uh, as a guy that could, that could be there for the long term? 
I need to see more. I I, I need well, to. You're see saying more. small sample size. I I do, and I just I don't know. You know, obviously, maybe I'm thinking. Maybe I'm looking at this through the lo- the the wrong lens. Really quick, I want to go back to Kako before I forget. Um, team has really kept us in the dark, and I, I'm the fact before you mentioned that, and the fact that they haven't announced anything made me even more nervous. Uh, and that this is something that's long term. But the more I sit here and think about it since the the injury happened, um, I'm actually feeling a little bit better about him. You know, and I think definitely there's a chance we'll see him again this year. I, again, I don't have no insider knowledge, but just going off of what I've, you know, what I'm speculating, I think there's a chance we see Kako again this year. I think you're going to see Kako. I think where it's going to be interesting is how much of a runway, because I, I feel like this kid gets set up, I wouldn't say to fail a lot, but I, I do think sometimes it's like there are setups and these like thought processes that are a few steps ahead of where he is as a player, right? They didn't play him in the AHL, right? Like we could go down the rabbit hole. Uh, The season Gallant brings that they go, they kind of come up 21-22, he only played like some like 19 regular season games because he had injuries. Um, they had the COVID shortened season that drastically affected his development. Like <clears throat> there have been a lot that Kako stepped into that's adverse and I'm not giving him victim card. I'm just saying like, you got to think about these, right? You know, we talk about this all the time. You got to give him the benefit of the doubt on some of these things. I think where my concern is, is like, so he comes back. He already struggled before the injury. That was like literally the conversation in Rangerland was like, what the heck is going on with Kako? Boom, goes down with a bad injury. So now you feel bad for him on that. What's the runway, Steve-O, right? Like if he comes back and like, it could be next week, it could be in March. Like if he comes back in March, where my concern is, and this is why I was talking about Johnny B, wouldn't you rather have the guy that's been in the lineup that's been grinding than forcing Kako back into a position that he's not 100%. Like, if you're going into a playoff series against New Jersey again, I'm playing Johnny B on the first line. That's interesting. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, uh, As of right now, I'm still going to stand my ground. I'm going to say yeah. that I'm just not confident in him moving, moving forward. I have to see a little bit more of him. Yeah. What I've seen these last few games, definitely promising. And, and he's getting a rare opportunity. One that I, that I don't think any of us have pictured uh, a scenario in this season, especially with all the line combos that we were cooking up in the off season, um, even yeah. in the first two weeks of the season. But I just, I listen, I'm not hating. I just got, I just got to see more. I just need to see more. And I I'm not convinced easily, and I I think that this team again I don't know the extent of Kako's injury, um, mm-hmm. but I think this team I think that March seems like a good range for a Kako return, depending that this is, that this injury isn't a serious one, and by the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like it. Um, but listen, obviously you want your better play up uh, players in the lineup. And I would, it's hard for me to answer this question because I'm basing this off of pure speculation of Kako. But I, I, as of right now, in the first week of December, yeah, I want to, I think we're going to see Kako again. And I'd rather have Kako back in the lineup for a playoff series. And now listen, Johnny B, prove me wrong, man. I, I would love to see that happen. But for me, I just don't see it as a long-term answer. I don't think that this is going to turn out. And I give you credit for having more confident than confidence in him than I do. But I don't um, know if it's confidence, man. I, I think it's also like Wheeler and and Kako didn't do it for me on that top line. And you know what the shame is? I don't think, and this isn't that by no means I'm not calling out. I think I'm just calling it how I see it. Like Zabanajad is actually on currently i believe an eight game point streak that's like the ties his longest in his career if you can believe that like he is on right now there's something deceptive though like something about i I don't know if it's the halo effect after the rebuild but like i don't think Kreider and advantage have necessarily like like, I feel like if you put Johnny Brodzinski to, if you, you had him centering Lafreniere and Panarin, he would be like 
putting up points, right? I mean, he is putting up points, but putting up points, right? Like, I feel like there's something about Crowder and Zibanejad right now that just five on five, they're just like, I feel like it's a reach. Every time they do do something, it's like they did something. And then there's a lot of time where you're not seeing much from them. And I understand they're playing responsible hockey, but I do think a lot of the finger has been pointed at their complementary pieces. When in reality, like, I haven't been blown away. If the Rangers were losing games night in and night out, I would be looking at those two like, I mean, we need something from you guys. Um, so I, I do think that's part of it too. I think if the team was losing the Kako and Heedle injuries would be magnified. Um, I, I think there would be a few areas of the Rangers right now that would be magnified. And I think they are escaping some of it because they haven't lost games in stretches and they have the immaculate record, right? Like 18, five and one now, four and one. So yeah, Steve-O, I, I want to know what your take is on that. Like that first line to me. Johnny Brodzinski gets called up something maybe we didn't foresee, but at the same time, like, I don't know for, for Wheeler and Kako struggles. I also think part of that's on the, uh, the mother hens up there on the first line. Yeah, for sure. Um, listen, there's one player that I want to circle that I'm a little bit disappointed in and it's a little frustrating. Um, can you guess him? I'll give you a hint. He's sitting right there on that third line right now. You mentioned him. Be Blake Wheeler. Of course. Yeah. Because Will, I mean, Will Cooley's been above X, right? Like we didn't even expect him to make the team. Far above. Far above. Dirty snipe against San Jose. Eh? That was a dirty one. Yeah, and I think for me it's it's frustrating because Blake Wheeler kind of juked me out. He had that goal against uh the Devils. He had a he, I think he had two goals in three games kind of a, a couple weeks ago. And you're like, finally, we got Blake Wheeler turning the page. And you know mm-hmm. what? He's gone right back into being quiet. And and I just for me, now we're sitting here and we're we're two months into the season, and Blake Wheeler's impact really has not been felt. Um, mm-hmm. and I know we were so high, and maybe it was partly due to the expectation. I know that. I was certainly one of his biggest supporters saying this is the best free agency uh, signing of the year for the Rangers. That mm-hmm. obviously has not been the case. If I had to go back and give you one, I think it's got to be Gustafson up to this point. But go circling back to Wheeler, I mean, not to say that, you know, he's a bust because uh, you can't answer that question until the season's over. But the expectation for him is just the bar has been lowered and he's been a frustrating player to watch. I, I watch. I think, I think if you look at the stats, I mean, he's just, you know, you, we watch games and I don't know if you're on the same level as me and you're just like, I have not heard Blake Wheeler's name all game long. Or if I did, it's nah, man. Of the penalty. I agree. There, there are times where it's like, we're kind of, I, I mean, for me in the home games, it's like press row and, Someone will just turn around, like I'll turn to Johnny and just be like, eh, I haven't seen much of this guy tonight. You know, and then all of a sudden you think to yourself and you're like, damn, I forgot he was on the ice. Um, and I think that's a that's the tough part. So I agree, but where where I agree with your sentiment is that the the bar's been lowered to the point where like before the season, it was like we're getting like a 50, 60 point scorer literally a season removed from that. And the excitement was that he takes a 10 times pay cut to play in New York. And like the, the thing I kept saying was like, well, what changed? Well, I think we're starting to see what maybe he did see that this was kind of coming and he was looking for a little bit of a change of senior in that respect. Right. Um, at the end of the day though, this is what I will say to counter. It is November. If this is March, but the, you know what? The president he's setting is kind of like, I don't see this turning around much. And I think that's where, um, you know, it's it's all right. But I, I feel like you're in a seven-game series and you have the lead in game six and you lose and now it's game seven. All these things come out, right? Like, that's the reality of it. The Rangers, I just put up the other day the, the helmet toss and now they won 36 games in the second half of the season after that. Guess what? No one complained much about what was going on when they went on an immaculate two seven-game win streaks in the second half. You know when all those complaints came out, Steve-O? After game three, when they lost to New Jersey at home and they blew the lead. 
It was now the line changes are an issue. Now this guy's not producing. So the only reason I do think it is, there is some urgency to what you're saying. And I do agree is because right now it's like, oh, they're 18, four and one. Okay. Like, but when they maybe lose a, a game two in double overtime in the first round, all this stuff's going to pop out at you. That's the reality of it. And the thing is, whether it's whether it's a little bit dramatized or not, there is some reality to it. And it does make sense because I hear you. Because now you're looking and it's like, if you're able to kind of shut down Panarin and laugh, which, I mean, that doesn't seem possible this season, but if you're able to shut them down, there are a lot of guys that got to pick up some slack. Yep. Yeah, and especially, again, last night's game isn't highlighting this issue, and I, I love that point for that you just mentioned. I mean, hopefully we don't get to that point in the season where these issues <laughs> come out. But again, we, we go on a losing streak. These issues aren't coming out of the blue. These are issues that are already in this day, and they've been issues for a while. Going back to Blake Wheeler, yeah. Charles. Blake Wheeler, we've known him these last few years. He's a 60 to 70 points, uh, you know, 60, 70 points, you know, per year, you know, on his average. Uh, mm-hmm. How many points does he have this year? Do you know? Six. Wow. Six points. He only has six points in, in 24 or 25 games this year. So at this point, we're sitting, you know, it's December now. We're going to, it's yeah. going to be 2024 before you know it. Are you confident to the where that he can turn around out of the blue and get back to that at least maybe 50 point, uh, you know, and 50 points looking at his last like five, six seasons and, you know, as an average, if he had 50 points, that's going to be his lowest season mark. He has six points this year. So, I, again, I'm not sure there's obviously been a dip, but I'm not confident that we can. I think we'd be lucky to get him to 40 points this year. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because obviously as the player, like none of those things are things he's thinking about, right? Is like expectation, oh, course, yeah. the way we view it. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I look at a player like a Jimmy VC, and it's like, he's still kind of cruising, man. Like he didn't, if he signed the PTO last year, had some confident stretches, and then this year kind of didn't play well, it'd be like, all right, what were we expecting? But I think VC. Um, that listen, they're getting contributions from everyone, <laughs> but I, I think the part that's alarming with Wheeler is like you're saying, like this is a guy that we weren't expecting seventy points, but we knew that was in his arsenal. We knew that was on the resume when he was coming in. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll say right now, no, I don't think he can turn around. I think it's gonna be like maybe finishes with like thirty points. And calls it a season and and chips in in the playoffs. And he's just kind of like a depth veteran guy in the playoffs. I mean, someone I could kind of think of that's similar, like by no means, I know this is really spitballing off the top. In 2012, John Tortorella had Ruslan Fedotenko on the Rangers 2012 roster. Same deal, like used to be pretty baller, but like, by the time he was on that team, it was like, it was more of a brand name and he was a depth guy and he was a big guy. So like throws weight around a little bit chip in, but other than that, like you weren't getting 70 points out of him. That's the name that I kind of throw off the top on that. I don't know if you could come up with something, you know, similar, even in, uh, in that sphere of things, you know, like a player that was like, I'm just kind of spitballing. Like that's what it reminds me of. So I, I, it's not that I don't have confidence in a bad way. I just think what he's shown is what is what you see is what you're getting. Yeah, and listen, this isn't a player that we could just sweep under the lineup. You know, especially yeah. this time of year, you're okay. But, you know, come two, three months down the line, this is a player that really is going to be a highlight in this lineup. And this team, I don't want to say is going to go as far as he could chip in, but when you – Get to the point where Panarin and Lafreniere slow that production down. These highlights are going to get, or these problems are going to get really blown up and everyone's going to start talking about it. And I think we're starting to talk about them now. And I think this conversation is going to emulsify if the Rangers can't turn it around. Now here to, before we wrap up today, Chives, 
Uh, I'll ask you this. We'll do a little preview coming up. It's a good thing that we our next game is on Saturday. We get a little bit of a break to recoup and and really try and regenerate the boys and get them going after really last night's snooze fest. But mm-hmm. we're gonna be on the road in what again in Washington playing the Capitals, home against the Kings, home against the Leafs. Who scares you the most? What are you looking for in these matchups? All right, I would say who scares me most? Los Angeles Kings. Ooh, I mean Road Warriors this year. They're nine and zero. They just set the NHL record. Uh, I think to start a season on the road, and it's like it's so weird, dude. Like seeing Kopitar and Dowdy in overtime, it's like, bro, I feel like these guys have been around forever. But I'll say, yeah, they scared me the most. And what I what I want to see, I, I want to see some uh structure that i think that's the one thing everyone wants to see because at the end of the day if you can bank on that the sky's the limit right but like we know that (laughs) oh my apologies we know the talent can only take them so far like under dave quinn under gallant the talent took them far and then when things fell off the wagon it was because of the structure being sold and marketed was like hey if all else fails under la violette at least they'll have their structure, and that's not what happened last game. So that's what I'll say. But for you, Steve, who scares you the most? Ooh. I'm going to go with the Capitals here. Uh, Something I, about Tom Wilson still is like that whole thing. I feel yeah, like it, man, that really gone away. It's the fact that we're on the road here. And, you know, when you look at the losses that we've had this year, you know, we've we've kind of had that road home flip or that home road flip. Now we got to go from a road game to a road game. And I feel like these last few games that we played on the road in Washington um, last year, um, we did not play well in, in mm-hmm. Washington. I'm look, remembering that one game where they literally, they blew us out on the scoreboard. It wasn't, it didn't seem like it was a blowout. I didn't remember it was 7-4 or 7-3 or something like that. We were on yeah. the road. But I remember watching that game. That was a horrible game. And to me, this Washington team is a way, I don't want to say better team than they were last year. Well, they are, but they are playing a different style than they were last year. And that style kind of scares me. So I'm going to say Washington will will uh will probably scare me the most. Um, Kings, you can't diminish what they've done this year. Um, I, I'd, at that point, I'd probably feel confident coming back home. Um, and I feel like we've played kind of well against the Kings as of late. I know that means, that means nothing in previous years to this year, but, um, and Toronto, I'm actually, I, I'm looking forward to the game. I think that'll be a good game and I think it'll be a close one. So obviously I think Toronto's probably, I think the best team out of, those three but i i gotta say washington uh, i'm not like shaking in my boots over here but i don't know something about about that game just gives me a gives me a i got a bad taste well oh, bad taste in the mouth no i hear you i i think uh washington i think if we're going real quick it's like washington the whole for whatever reason that tom wilson thing still lingers over like he always finds a way to score and like um, I, I think if things get a little bit heated, like watch out for that, right? Like that's always on the back of your mind with this team. Um, yeah, I actually I do think LA is the best team though, because Toronto to me they've had their struggles with they brought in physical guys to have some edge, and they didn't really do as much as they thought. They just dropped kind of a stinker to Boston. Um, I, I think Toronto is feeling their oats a little bit. Um. But I do think the LA Kings are like a cup contender this year. Like, I think we could see rematch Rangers Kings. That would be crazy. But every crazy things happen in the playoffs. But um, yeah, I think they're like one of those teams out of the West that could really could really win the win the shindig. That's a that's a hot take right there, Charles. We'll have to we'll have to re- revisit that. Yeah. Um, like I said in in uh, last week's episode, I, I think the Kings are like three or four points ahead of the Leafs. So, I mean, you're not you're not going to be able to find out who's better than who until you get another month or two and we diverge more in the standings. But Kings have held up yeah. strong, man, at, up to this point. I think I think overall, I think they're better. They're playing better than teams like Colorado. Um, I think yeah. the only team out there that might beat the Kings up to this point is Vegas. So can't believe it, man. Like they have not, they have not fell off since they won the cup. It's crazy. 
they're a good team. They're a good team. But listen, we're holding in there, and obviously you can't you can't diminish what Boston has done. So it'll be an interesting one, and we'll be back at it again next week to recap this point. Hopefully, we're able to turn things around, and we're not coming in after you know all gloom and not only does it stink coming in doing an episode after a tough loss but being sick on top of that i'm really must be a doozy man i'm sorry about I that know. like i so one thing i had to look forward to yesterday you know <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sure to follow us at puck talk cs on our youtube we've been pumping out content on the instagram for updates twitter puck talk cs puck talk cs.com you can find the episodes archive of all episodes that we've done in the past we've had a couple special guests here those episodes and topics are still relevant fantastic listens go check them out good luck lgr and always remember it's just the luck of the puck